Hello, everybody, and welcome to our membership workshop. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator. And we have a jam-packed evening tonight. We'll be talking to Granite Base Camp's General Manager, Allison Beatty, about some great programming ideas that Granite Base Camp has to offer to help our unit leaders plan their yearly calendar and bring those scouts and retain those scouts throughout the year. And we also have Mike Mary, who has the district activities calendar um, and is gonna show us the 18 months worth of awesome plans that the districts um, have in store for us as well. So thank you guys for joining us. And I'm gonna bring it to Allison because she is at camp school and has a fully loaded schedule. And so I'm gonna have her start off with all the exciting things with Granite Base Camp. Hello, y'all. I have moved so that I have Wi-Fi because I'm away from the dining hall. Um, so I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm Allison Beatty. I use she, her, her pronouns, her, hers pronouns. And as Cindy said, I'm at National Camp School. Um, that's what we, the Boy Scouts use for training people to be ready for camp. So I'm in Rice Lake, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and I come home tomorrow. Um, so a couple of things I want to talk about to share with you. Um, if you don't know, I'm going to move one more time. If you don't know already about um, our Saturday program, we run Saturday program at Granite Base Camp every Saturday or most Saturdays, we'll say. Um, we have just a couple left now. We have this Saturday and next Saturday, and then we'll be done for the summer season. Um, well, that's actually not true. In July, July 9th, July 23rd, and August 6th, we have family weekends for family camping and uh, Saturday program as well. Um, after the summer, we'll open our Saturday programs again, beginning on uh, September 10th and running till November 19th. And then again on January 7th, um, right up until June 3rd with the exception of the Saturdays after February and April vacation. Um, then in September, we're gonna have an outdoor adventure day and that's gonna be a merit badge day that focuses on, oh, well, actually Cubs and Scouts BSA to work on adventures and badges. So advent, uh, the badges that we offer might be climbing, might be canoeing. Um, kids might, will, will likely not finish those badges in the day. However, um, they'll have a really great start on it and can continue working on it. Uh, in September 24th is Eye Blast, which is a shooting sports event. Um, we will have um, our normal archery and BBs, but we'll also have um paintball and air rifles and uh sorry not paintballs we don't shoot paintball guns we will shoot um the uh, we use paintballs in the slingshots sorry it's, it's been a long week um so, uh, october 10th sorry october 22nd is spooktacular and we're going to do spooktacular a little bit differently this year um in the past it was on all volunteer event and uh, it was led by a group that has decided to step down and that's great. They've done their duty. And so this year we're going to run it as a, uh, an event, uh, sorry, a contest. So, uh, any unit that camps for the weekend gets to camp for free and your responsibility during that weekend is on Saturday. You need to decorate your campsite so that camp, uh, so that the cars that drive through can see your haunted campsite. There will be a theme, um, and there will be a judge, judges from our board will come and the Cub unit and the Scouts BSA unit that um, win the decorating contest will earn a one free adult per unit uh, at the next, for 2023 summer. So that's a, a fun way to do it. Um, 11.19 is our Ready Scout event. Uh, Ready Scout is in co uh, collaboration with FEMA um, and we run a bunch of badges uh, collected, connected to ePrep. I forgot to tell you about that my, my note system today. So I didn't have my notebook, so I had to grab a, a napkin in the dining hall. Um, uh, and then our annual, our annual holiday breakfast, which we used to call Cubs, Cakes, and Claws, will be December 3rd this year. Um, some other, uh, one other thing I want to share with you is that after September 15th, we'll have adventure kits. Um, adventure kits are essentially a badge or an adventure in a box. They have all the consumables and all the instructions that you'll need. Um, and you can uh, borrow those or rent those for $25. Um, and all that really covers it, or that's all that's really working on is covering the consumable pieces, but it has everything there for you. Um, and then in January, we will have a creative arts day. 
um, that will have some creative arts marriage badges as well as cub adventures. And in April, it'll be environmental science. It's usually uh, just before April vacation and tied into Earth Day. Um, and so that gets us all the way till April of 2023. Um, and I do have our Saturday dates from now until then, but for the most part, we are open um, from now and uh, most Saturdays after September 10th, this September. So does anybody have any questions about what Granite Base Camp does or is or how we can best um, support your units there? I just have one quick question. Um, sure. When were the adventure kits going to be available again? I've missed after that, September right? 15th. After September. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a that's a Brendan Adams project, and he's on camp staff, so I figured he could have a couple weeks off after camp to get his head on straight and then get those out. They're mostly <laughs> built and ready to go. We just have to really kind of get them in the system. Is that what you would do in the last time um, when when COVID hit? Is is it the same type nope. of thing? No, okay, this is more totally durable different. than uh, more durable than what we sent home. That you the ones that were shipped home. These would be we would find uh, either you'd pick them up in Manchester or if you're much further north, we'll arrange a way for you to get them. And um, then you would use everything in it and then return it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about Granite Base Camp? Um, if you have, if you think of something, um, I will, there will be a flyer that goes out shortly with all that information because I know units are beginning to start their yearly planning, which is why Mike got his group together to plan their 18, 18 month calendar. Um, and so if you do have any questions, I, I know Cindy said she was going to drop my email in the chat. Um, feel free to email me whenever. Um, just be aware that I probably won't get back to you until early next week at this point. Um, maybe tomorrow in the airport, but we'll see. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions at any time, though. And um, we love to, to help units out to make that adventure um, make Granite Base Camp work for their units to either to recruit new kids. That's the benefit of Grace Base Camp being open to the public that you can bring non-scouts with you. It's a great bring a friend event um, to get kids excited. Uh, and then it's also great to get some of your adventures done and have support and some staffing around those, the ones that you're not super comfortable with. So um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Um, but as Cindy said, I do have a jam. I'm actually skipping, I skipped flags and dinner. Um, I know, I know, but Hey, y'all are worth it. Um, and I probably should have apologized for my visual appearance at the moment. I, uh, was out climbing all day today. So, um, I appreciate you letting me jump on first and then go join my dinner team. And, um, I will talk to y'all soon. Thank you, Allison, so much. Thank you. Have a good night, y'all. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. So um, I put some notes in the chat for you guys who just joined us. Thank you for joining us. Sorry, we had to start right at seven because as Allison said, she had to get on and move on to her next adventures at camp training this week. Um, I know, I guess she has to eat. So we'll, we'll let her do that. <laughs> so there are some notes in the chat and Allison did say that there will be a flyer coming out um, with some information about um, all the upcoming things that she has planned. Um, in regards to the adventure kits and how to secure those and the events coming up at Granite Base Camp. Um, and I'm gonna move along and let Mike Mary jump in as well in case he needs to jump off. I wasn't sure what your time frame was tonight, Mike. I know you're busy. Um, so Mike is here to talk about um, our district activities. Yeah, ab absolutely. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I, it was it was touch and go there for a minute, but I was able to get out of work, get home and, and join everybody here tonight. So excited to talk to you all about the uh, the DAC as it's become as it's become known. Uh, so DAC is an acronym stands for District Activity Collaborative Committee. Um, and we are a group. Uh, we just recently celebrated our one year birth birthday. So yay us. Um, so basically what we are, we are a group of uh, folks who are, um, uh, who get really excited about putting on really big um, scouting events. These are your cubberies, your camperies, your, your uh, chuck wagon derbies and your Klondike derbies. Uh, and now uh, Pinewood derbies. We, we found that <laughs> most of the members of our committee were heavily involved in Pinewood derbies as well. 
And so we thought we, we, we decided that was another event that was very well suited uh, for, you know, to have sort of that collaborative element, um, uh, you know, added to it. So, yeah, so who is collaborating? So this is a district function, right? We have in Daniel Webster Council, we have seven districts. Uh, so we have had seven activities committees uh, historically kind of running their own programs, coming up with their own um, uh, camp reads and stuff. And, you know, uh, a little over a year ago, we started talking and thinking, you know, maybe, maybe we could, um, if we started working together, uh, we could do something special. So um, I think this, you know, the efforts of this committee started really taking off as of this past winter with all of our Klondikes. Uh, so for any of you who were able to participate in, in, in any of the Klondikes, you know, instead of having seven smaller Klondikes, we concentrated on putting on three huge Klondikes. And, you know, the, the feedback that we got from the events was, was mostly positive. You know, everyone was excited because there were more kids at the events. There was more, there were more staff available to, to run the events. Um, parking was an issue, but that's a good thing. When you're an activities person and it's hard to find parking, that means something's working right. So, um, and, and all that, so that success from, from Klondike's kind of culminated in with our spring activities. You know, we were able to put together two pretty exciting uh, events for our Cub Scouts. Uh, one being the Weird Science uh, Chuck Wagon that was at Camp Carpenter. And then a couple of weeks later, also at Camp Carpenter, we did a scouting skills um, event that was aimed towards Cub families. And I, I was at that one, had a lot of fun meeting people. Uh, we had about 80 families, I think, uh, participate in the program. And for some of them, it was their kind of their first experience with outdoor camping with their Cubs, outdoor cooking with their Cubs. Um, you know, the kids got to build, you know, their first scout first aid kit, which they got to take home with them. So we had a lot of fun. Um, and then of course, for our older scouts, uh, we, we put on an orienteering event uh, in Bow. And then just this past weekend, we had a massive uh, event called World of Scouting. If you're involved in social media, I'm sure you saw about 4,000 promotional uh, um, posts in, in advance of that event. So we ended up having over 600 uh, scouts and adults participate in that event. I think the final count was 630. And that is um, probably the largest event we've had in Daniel Webster Council since at least the last um, uh, New Hampshire Jamboree, which was I think in 2018. So we got a lot of adults and, and a, a lot of kids who had a blast. It was, it's been described as, as a summer camp in a day because there was just so much going on up at, up at um, up Hidden Valley this past weekend. So, and then the, ad the adults who helped run it, who participated, uh, they're just thrilled to death with, with how the weekend went and just how much fun and activity was going on up there. So we're kind of, we're, that's our mission. Our mission is putting on these, these kind of fun events. We, we see when it comes to membership, we see our role as one of retention. We want to provide awesome, fun events that really get your scouts excited, get them wanting to come to the next events, you know, stay in scouting because they know that next season there's going to be another massive event that's just going to be, you know, a blast and they're not going to want to miss it. So um, I did in the chat window, I did drop um, another one of our events um, or one of our efforts rather is our 18 month calendar. So I Whenever I talk to unit leaders, cub masters, you know, scout masters, uh, crew advisors, and and talk about you know district activities, probably the one thing piece of um, uh, constructive criticism I hear that's very consistent is you know we our unit wants to participate, but we never know about the events far enough in advance. We plan our own events, and then and then finally the you know the district calendars come out. And we've already got something planned. So our group said, you know what, we need to turn that around. We need to do a better job planning and present to our units a, a 18 month calendar. So that was our goal. We put that together um, just about a month ago and that's in the chat window now. So you can kind of see um, what we've got in store for the coming you know, uh, fall, winter, spring, and then the following fall of 2023. So, um, just uh, oh oh, I'm already I'm already getting some 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 feedback. So we'll we'll talk about that in a second, uh, Jillian. Um, but 
So let's just talk about a couple of them. So some of the highlights on the calendar. Now, first of all, this is sort of a version 1.0 of the calendar. It was the one that was released immediately after our annual planning meeting. And um, since then we have uh, uh, come up with a theme for the fall event. And it's basically gonna be kind of like a wizards and magical beast type thing. You can think Harry Potter, but we won't say that out loud. Um, otherwise Cindy will mute me or something. So, so think wizards, think magical beasts, think uh, you know, all things magic. Um, that'll be the theme. Now the idea here is that um, we're gonna have a very similar event at three different locations on the same weekend. And the hope is that, um, that basically any unit in the state will have an opportunity to go to one of these events, you know, close to their backyard anyway. So we as a committee will be kind of working together, you know, coming up with one patch um, design, uh, working on similar program elements, games and challenges and, and advancement opportunities maybe. Um, so we can kind of roll those in, into all three events. Um, I do suspect that each one of these events will be put on by a local group. So you will probably see, um, you know, some, so each event will be a little bit unique, a little bit special, you know, sort of to that area. So um, that should be, oh, don't see the link to the calendar. Okay, so Lynn, I did drop it in the chat window. I just dropped it again. I know people, sometimes if you drop it in there and then somebody shows up, maybe they don't see the link. I've, I've had mm. that experience before. Um, so let's see, what else? Oh, um, yeah, another, another highlight of this is the Pinewood Derby. So um, we've had a couple of collaborative Pinewood Derbies this past season, and those seem to go off really well. I know Historic and Abnaki worked together. We put on one Pinewood Derby. And again, instead of having two Pinewood Derbies with 50 scouts each, we had one Pinewood Derby with over 100 scouts. So we considered that a huge success. I mean, the gymnasium was rocking. Kids were having a blast. Um, it was twice the fun. So other members of the committee liked the idea and we said, you know what, for 2023, let's do something a little different, a little something new. We'll do regional Pinewood Derbies instead of district Pinewood Derbies. So we'll do three regional derbies and then that will all culminate. The plan is to have a statewide state championship Pinewood Derby. Um, the plan is to have it at the New Hampshire Jamboree in late May of 2023. I don't have a date for that yet, but I am working really hard on that. Um, so that's probably the, you know, that's kind of the second uh, big news on that. So just another note about this flyer and sort of the, the updated flyer that came out after this one. So these should have been available at your local round tables. That's what I try to do. You know, we try to get our information, put the flyers together and get them out at round tables. So that should be, that'll probably be your first opportunity to see what's going on uh, as far as these events. Usually after the, the round tables, we've had a chance to get the information out. You know, we're working with our, with our communications group to try to get that information out via primarily Facebook and, and sort of mass email. Those are two, you know, most common uh, means of, of, of communication. And, you know, we, we're working on some other ways to, to get information out as well. So um, I think that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's what my group is working on. Uh, I, I can tell you that working with activities people is really exciting. Because this, the, for whatever reason, probably the most excitable, um, energetic, um, enthusiastic scouters seem to gravitate towards activities. I think these are just the people, they just love putting on these big events and sharing their creativity, sharing their passion for, you know, fun, exciting scouting stuff and, um, and, and you know, making sure that the kids have a good time. So, um, so again, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I do see, all right, in the chat window, there's a question about Feedback on the calendar. Many Cub Masters not happy about the timeline change to Chuck Wagon. Um, so I'd be very interested in getting a little bit more specifics. Like, okay, I don't like it. Well, what do I like? You know, that's I. I want to. I want to hear both sides of it. So you know, this was. Um, you know, this was a, a collaborative effort of about twenty volunteers who kind of got together and said, "All right, let's." Um, let, let's put this on the calendar. They picked that particular weekend. So Jillian, you're shaking your head. You talk. Yeah, tell me, so tell me as a cub master, we got this at round table and I can tell you there was tons of grumbling. So okay. um, I saw your DACA meeting, whatever you call it. I was there at Chuck Wagon. 
Um, and I will have to say that if you know anything about Cub Scouting, you know that we haven't even started programming the date you have this truck wagon. We're still onboarding. Our kids yeah. don't know anything yet. So right. why would you go and have a truck wagon and quiz them on their Cub Scout skills when they don't even have uniforms yet? It's been spring forever. I want to say maybe before I came on the scene, so be, I've been here around 10 years. Yep. They tried doing a fall one and not one pack signed up. And that was the end of having a fall chuck wagon. So I don't know where our historical uh, perspective was when this came out, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's just like, it's rolling our eyes. Most cub won't be ready to chuck, to do chuck wagon. It just okay. doesn't logistically make any sense to any of us that we can figure out. Um, it's not welcoming to new scouts to be like yeah you just joined scouts we're camping this weekend it it just it does. i'm having a really hard time and you're talking to somebody who walked away with a spirit stick at the last chalk wagon like it is legit like legitimately my favorite day of the year in scouting mm -hmm. my favorite my favorite okay. event and i don't think you'll see our pack if this is what the deal is because it I it won't even have, I can't have my lions and my tigers have this as their first experience of Cub Scouting. It's overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. a long day as it is, even in the spring for the younger kiddos. So it, to us, we're, we're like really lost and scratching our head. And it's not a local group. It's not even our district running ours. So Okay, so, so I, I'm not like, I don't know. I, I'm all about change. I'm all about changing things up because our chuck wagon currently, the stations don't even reflect the, our handbooks or the program we've had now for four or five years. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about changing some stuff up by all means. Um, but fall, fall doesn't make a lick of sense when they haven't had the chance to learn the program because that's what chuck wagon is. It's a skill test. I, I I have to say I was really disappointed and I wasn't the only one. We, yeah. There was the, yeah, all well, the ones in the cup breakout. We were scratching our heads. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think I get it. I think I understand hearing you. Um, so do you mind if I ask what district are you in? Massabesic. Okay. Okay. So I, and I know Massabesic has kind of a, a strong history of Chuck Wagon. So in terms of just sort of an overall schedule picture, one thing that we were kind of up against in terms of planning out an 18 month calendar was spring. So spring is occupied by the New Hampshire Jamboree. So in, we know from, from previous years that when the council's gonna put on a Jamboree, it's all hands in, right? So if the council's gonna do a spring 2023 Jamboree, but They're again, really that's targeted at the troops. That's a targeted troop event. And I get that we share hands, like I'm a troop, I'm PAC, but you, PAC is what feeds our membership. You don't mm -hmm. get that many ki ki kids at the troop level that just walk into scouting. And PACs need to get more respect. Yeah. And our events mean that work need to not be touched because right. that's, that's what keeps the scouters in. So how about we do this? I, I know, you know, this, this conversation is about membership and stuff. And, and, you know, Jillian, you may not believe that we, I care particularly much about, you know, Cub Scouting. I, I'm very worried about Kent, uh, about Cub Scouting right now. With the number of packs that in my district we've lost, we are putting in special effort just to get some of the packs back up and running. So we talk, we think about Cub Scouting a lot and we want to make provide programming for Cub Scouts. So how about, would you mind having a chat offline on this? And maybe you can help me understand some things a little bit better and give me a message to bring back, you know, to the committee. Um, sure, I do know, not a problem. Okay, I'd love to do that. So I'm gonna put my email address uh, in, the, in the chat window so you can reach out to me and we can we set something up and, uh, and have a chat, okay? Perfect, thank and you. And that goes for everybody too. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to take input. And I mean, that's, that's really my role is sort of the, the, the champion of the DAC committee is I want to get this feedback. And I try to go to all the events. If I can, I'm, I'm there talking to parents, talking to leaders um, and getting feedback. And I want it all, whether it's good or bad. 
and I'll take it back to the group and, uh, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, and yeah, and not, not all of our, our feedback has been positive. You know, there have been some, some trying moments, if you will. So, and we're going to work through those. And we're trying to make ourselves better and, and provide you guys with the best possible program. Again, retention, give something fun for the kids to do. Jeanette, you have something. So um, for the past, I'm, I'm now district commissioner, but for the past 10, 15 years, 10, no, 10, 12 years, I've run district activities, helped run district activities for Abenaki. And Jillian, we understand that um, in September, having a cub event, um, we did it anyway. We had cub kids, we have units come and do that. I don't, Abenaki has never done a check wagon that I am aware of. So that's our new thing that we're learning about. Um, but we understand the concept. Um, I'm on the DAC committee now just as a, a way of communicating with the units rather than being on the activities. But um, I want to make sure that our Cubs and, and our troops all have activities because we need that for retention. And I thank Mary for taking this on with, with all of us. So just want to put that out there. So, you, you know, Abenaki is with you with about, let's, you know, get our Cubs out there camping. We need them out camping as part of their, their advancement. And you're right, we're not going to keep cubs or troops if we're not camping with them. So thank you very much. Mike? Yeah, Lynn. Is, is this 18 month calendar gonna be a rolling thing or when can we expect the next, next I, I hope, edition? I, yeah, I hope so. I, I, got to, I had a lot of fun uh, getting, ask, <laughs> actually this, putting together that, that calendar was the first chance for the committee to get together in a year, right? Mm -hmm. We've been meeting by Zoom that sure. whole time. So we said, let's get together. Let's have some food. Let's have some fun and, and put this thing together. So um, how we're going to roll it forward. I would like it to be, yes, in the fall, we, 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 we kind of add winter 2023, 24 onto okay. the calendar in the winter, we start, you know, uh, uh, spring of 2024 and so on. That's the way I'd prefer it to be. But, you know, I, you know, my experience, you know, in, in, as a cub leader, as a, as a scout leader, you know, annual planning, usually, not, not all the time, but usually it's late spring into the summertime, sometimes late summer. So I really challenged our group. I said, let's have this calendar out before May. You know, we ask our units to plan an annual calendar, 12 months. Let's give them something that's, you know, not, not just 12 months, but we'll give them a bonus. We'll give them an extra six months to plan around. So yeah, that, that's good. That yeah, because my trip planned their calendar two weeks ago. So, okay. so you know, I knew a, a lot of the events already, you know, the fall and the jamb jamboree, et cetera, et cetera. But, but it's nice to know, you know, more in advance so right. that they can consider it before they actually put things down. Right. And, and you know, we've got, we've got a lot of other steps we got to get through. I mean, okay, we have a calendar. It's, it's, it's on paper. We can distribute it that way electronically and so on. You know, now, now it's on us. We have to get this stuff on the New Hampshire scouting calendar so it's visible. We need mm -hmm. to start promoting these things. So obviously, we're going to focus on the fall, uh, but we'll kind of step through and, and, um, and try to get the word out. Because, you know, communications and, and getting the word out, that's one of the biggest challenges. Um, it used to be roundtable. You just flyers at roundtable. That's all you had to do because the people were there. And that's not really the case anymore. So we're, we're working really hard to find, you know, to use other methods and even looking for new ways to, to, to get the word out. And, and yeah, some I, of that is, yeah. you know, talking up next season's event at mm -hmm. this season. So with an 18 month yep. calendar, that's easier to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think QR codes work well. That's what happens at the Arrowhead district. Okay. You know, um, CJ Bourne brings like the sheet of paper with one QR code on it and and we all scan it and then we got it, you know? Yeah. And CJ is an active member of our committee and sure, he's great. I know that. Right? Yeah. Arrowhead has a, has a history of, of, you know, of putting on some really great events, yep. you know, over the last few years, so, you know, with Ben Dibble and now CJ yeah. um, taking that on. Yeah. I, I, my husband and I did Klondike for about five years. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I know. I don't do the activities so much anymore. I do Eagle board stuff and other things. So, <laughs> That's pretty important too. Absolutely. 
Okay, Mike, thank so. you so much. Um, My pleasure. Uh, all the planning that you guys do, it, it's just amazing. You know, I think we all have to remember as we're all, as all of us here are volunteers, I'm still a volunteer in a troop as well. Um, you know, it's all extra time. I mean, even Mike up until today, um, I wasn't sure if he'd be able to join us because his work schedule is also very crazy. So I just really, really want to say how much you're appreciated with all your work and, and, and having this calendar out there for people to plan. And, um, you know, um, I, you know, the chuck wagon is super fun and I know it might be controversial for, for some of our Cub Masters, but I think getting out there in the fall is a great thing. And I think introducing some of those scouting skills to those new scouts in the fall and camping out in the fall is, is an excellent way to keep the, our, our new Cubs in the program and get them excited about it. Um, so I, I, I think, I think that's actually a really fun idea. Um, and, you know, and we'll see how, you know, we can see how it works and, and then who's to say there's not a spring, um, truck wagon as well. Uh, maybe look into that and, and maybe one district or one or two end up doing a spring truck wagon if they feel like that will work better for them as well. But it is really important to have those big events in the fall, especially, uh, the fall seems to be our heaviest recruiting time still. Um, really important to get that big event in um, right at the beginning, whether it's truck wagon or whether it's something else, make sure your unit, make sure your districts are planning those larger events to really um, get the kids excited and get, um, you know, and, and want to continue with the program for sure. Really appreciate that. And um, I know Mike sent the attachment um, in the chat, but uh, we actually did post that calendar on the Membership and Marketing Hub under Leader Resources. Um, so you're big time now, Mike. Wow. <laughs> Pressure's really on. <laughs> and uh, I, I always like to say I like to have everything in one spot. I'm the type of person that um, I used to be a binder lady, and I would have the binder with everything in it. So everything was in my one binder for scouting and one binder for PTO and one binder for whatever else I was doing, right? We all wear many hats. Um, and now I try to keep everything on the Membership and Marketing Hub so that way you guys all can get it with just a few clicks. Um, the other resource that is on the Membership and Marketing Hub, uh, which I will get to explaining in one second, is like a one pager that has a link to the council calendar, which also is 18 months planned out as well. Um, uh, the Mobile Base Camp calendar, which has a bunch of um, events that units can take advantage of and recruit at with the mobile base camp, um, large community events coming up throughout the year and, um, and links to Granite Base Camp and all that fun stuff. So if you have Mike's DAC calendar and then the council one sheeter um, that's also on the membership and marketing hub printed out um, in addition to your holidays and last year's calendar, you will have all these resources at your fingertips when you go into your planning meetings. Um, so speaking of planning meetings, um, I just have a few um, quick tips when we talk about planning our year in scouting. Um, and I'm going to share my screen here. Everyone see our screen? I feel like I always have to ask these days, even though Zoom has been around for a while now. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, so just a few tips. I do want you guys to like jump in uh, whenever something speaks to you. I don't want to just be talking at you. I think we had a great conversation earlier, and I think those conversations are really important. It won't go into presentation mode for me, so we will um, stick with it this way. Um, but yeah, so definitely jump in. Don't, feel free. Um, so when we go into planning, as you guys know, you really want to think about the budget first. So you want to have a solid idea of what your unit's budget really looks like before we start planning a bunch of different activities and outings. So, you know, um, there's a utilize, you can utilize the troop and pack operating budget worksheet, which I'll show you where that is in a second. Set a fundraising goal and make sure you have a fundraising plan in place for the year. And then plan activities around your budget that really fit into the budget or fit into what your fundraising goals would look like. Um, so that way, when you set the goal, you can share that with your unit and let them know, hey, if we reach this goal, we can go to Battleship Cove, or if we reach this goal, we're going to do a big campery um, and kind of make it part of your fundraising incentive as well. Some annual planning tips. So hopefully, um, I know a lot of you guys here, as Jillian was saying, are very experienced leaders. 
and we appreciate you. You guys are, you know, the, the strength of scouting or the spirit of scouting right here in this group. So I know that all of you are doing yearly planning meetings because that's what keeps your unit strong. So make sure every year, um, I know Lynn just said she just had hers, uh, which way to go, Lynn. Um, a lot of our units have the annual planning meetings in around June or July, but of course there are some that have them in May as well before summer really kicks in. So make sure you have a date set aside. And before you um, invite and plan out this meeting, make sure you evaluate what your unit has done in the past year. What should we start doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we continue doing? Those are really the three main questions. If you decide to put out a survey to your scouts or your scout leaders or even parents, really all you need is those three questions. A lot of folks really uh, get intimidated by large long surveys. Think about how much time you guys have when it comes to um, submitting surveys, right? So really the three questions are all you need. What should we start? What should we stop? And what should we continue? And then maybe have a little blurb at, at the end for them to add their comments. And then think about who you're going to invite. Obviously with troops, you want your youth leaders there. You want your unit volunteers and adults, unit committee members and adult leaders. Um, definitely think about having your chartered organization rep there. That's very important. They're gonna know the important dates that the chartered, chartered org has set for the year. Um, your unit commissioner and parents and guardians who are actively involved. You really wanna invite those folks that are very active actively participating in your unit and that really engage in the activities. So be prepared, right? That's, that's what we say, we have to be prepared and be prepared with the necessary information before going in and laying out that calendar. So make sure you have the most up-to-date school calendar in front of you. You can find those on your district website um, to have those key school dates and holidays, community events, chartered organization key dates that we just spoke about. Even your personal calendars, you know, I know I keep everything on my handy dandy smartphone. Make sure your personal calendars are up to date and have that in front of you as well. So you're not missing big important events with your unit. Key district and council dates and events, which Mike just spoke about, we can refer to that calendar. Data from um, your unit's interest survey. So if you do do a quick survey like we laid out a second ago, or if you have your own special interest survey, uh, make sure you have those results in front of you of what your unit is looking for. Last year's um, annual plan or calendar. Have a list of your unit's priorities and goals. You know, every year you do the, you know, Cubs do the Pinewood Derby. So obviously, you know, the Derby um, is, is something that will be annual and will be there every year. Um, if you do the Klondike every year, that will be in there. Chuck Wagon, all those big events that are staples. Um, advancement records to see, um, you know, to help you plan out how to get the other scouts to advance as well. And a general outline of next year's program. So maybe you have an outline from last year that you follow and you kind of plug those in for the next year before you get other, um, you know, to, in order to get input from everybody else. So um, at the troop level, you know, obviously it is scout led. So uh, make sure you include the SPL in your planning process, explain the importance of the process and really explain their role in the process as well. So you really want their input. You want them to go back to their patrols and to the other youth leaders and discuss you know, what's important to them to include in this next year's schedule. At a PAC level, it's really the PAC families and the leadership that plan that calendar, but it's also really important to get their input too. If you want your Cubs to stick around, you know, maybe you do a quick show of hands of some of their favorite activities or favorite, um, you know, little trips and field trips that they did throughout the year as well. Um, you know, this meeting at the PAC level, really at the troop level as well, is usually led by the committee chair. And you want to share last year's calendar and then, you know, decide to keep those annual events and then work around um, those and add some new ones as well. And goal setting is important too. You know, how many kids do you want to get to summer camp and how will you achieve that? Plan one outdoor adventure a month. And that's a goal and that you can actually just plan maybe every third Saturday is your outdoor adventure. Uh, maybe every, you know, every other meeting that you have a bring a friend event for your recruiting event. But at the very least, 
plan that recruiting event once a month. And it does not have to be a big, crazy thing. You guys know, you can have your scouts invite a non-scouting friend and it can be as simple as playing baga ball. Um, it can be a kickball tournament between adults and the kids, or it can be really um, just one of your uh, meetings where maybe they're doing a really cool STEM project or other advancements and just have the kids bring a friend and make sure you have extra materials for them to just jump in and get involved. It doesn't have to be a huge, you know, expensive event for these kids to come and join you. Just make sure you schedule in once a month. This is when we bring our non-scouting friends to the meeting. And that way the kids get into the habit of asking a new friend every time. And then of course, planning, um, you know, what your fundraising looks like, what your goals look like, um, you know, whether you're doing trails and popcorn or another unit fundraiser, make sure that is on the calendar. So your annual planning conference or meeting, it can be hosted at your regular meeting location. I would plan for maybe two to three hours, um, but always depends, you know, take a look at last year, see how long it took, and then obviously book it for the same amount of time. Make sure you have plenty of time to go through questions and really get everything on your calendar. And um, be sure that your leader meetings or your you know, committee meetings are planned monthly. You wanna have that set in stone. You know, the first Monday of every month or the first Tuesday of every month is your monthly committee meetings. Those are really important to keep everyone on the same page and keep everyone on track. For your PAC meetings or your troop court of honors, I put COR, sorry, it's court of honors. <laughs> um, you want to have those planned often, right? Because advancement is key. When these, when the little kids are earning, you know, their adventures and they're earning different, you know, and they're earning all their special things every week or every couple of weeks, and then they don't get their awards, you know, for months and months and months, they're going to lose interest. So make sure your pack meetings are once a month. I would say, you know, the, the troop, it really depends how quickly your scouts, you know, rank up and, and earn merit badges and that sort of thing, but really try to have a set time, whether it's once a month, once every couple of months to make sure that they are seeing the fruit of their labor. Um, set recruiting events in stone, as we talked about ahead of time. So that way you can enter those joint scouting dates um, on the membership and marketing hub and have those flyers out in the schools, out in your community far enough ahead so people can really plan to join you at your recruiting event, at your next meeting, at your next outing, whichever you choose. Um, to invite them to. And your, and your outcome really is your annual calendar and the annual calendar equals great retention, right, Mike? That's what we see. When people have a great program, those kids stick around. Um, so before I take questions, I just wanna let you guys know, because speaking of programming and upcoming events, we do have a lot of events coming up. As Allison mentioned, mentioned we have adventure days just about every Saturday at Granite Base Camp. We have tons of mobile base camp events. Um, we definitely need volunteers to help us out at those events to really make the most of the mobile base camp. But the mobile base camp is going to a lot of really large community events in Concord, Manchester, Nashua. Um, there's, there's some further up north as well. Um, and lots of other locations, Hollis, um, Hooksit. There's a lot of events happening. Merrimack, New Hampshire as well has a few coming up. And the more scouters and kids that we get there in uniform, the better. And, um, and you can use that as a recruiting opportunity for your unit. Um, on June 8th, we do have internet advancement and scout book training, which is via Zoom. That is under events on our Facebook page. June 12th from 11 to five is our next range master training. And we are encouraging every unit to at least try to send one or two volunteers to range master training when they can because then they can really utilize the ranges uh, um, at the mobile base camp. June 18th from nine to three is Fishing for Adventure, which is a really fun fishing day at Granite Base Camp. This is open to all youth. So if you have some prospective families that haven't decided to join your unit yet, and you're looking for a summer fun activity, this is one of those activities that's free. You can bring your whole unit, you can um, bring your dens, or you can bring your patrols. It's for all ages. You can just bring your family if you like and come join us, um, you learn fishing skills, you get to fish off our docks. And then for really little kids maybe, or for people who are a little squeamish about the worm thing, <laughs> which I don't know what scout is, but maybe somewhere. 
Uh, we do have backyard bass, which is waterless and wormless fishing as well. Um, on June 20th is our popcorn kickoff. So add that to your calendars. You'll, uh, that's gonna be at Stark Brewing um, Company. And June 24th is Scout Night at the Silver Night. So they're doing a very special event for our scouts. It is um, uh, un unlimited food and soft drinks. And the scouts get to go on the field. It's gonna be super fun. And all those events and registration links are on the Dana Webster Council Facebook page. And we do have some resources and this slide deck will actually be, um, I know this is really small, this slide deck will actually um, also be on the membership and marketing hub um, under workshops. And you can view the past workshops there as well, but the slide decks um, are under each workshop too. So you can download those. So these are some planning resources. So as you see on nhscaling.org um, slash resources, leader resources, Underneath here, you'll have all of this to help you plan. Um, they have program planning, they have um, den leader resources, tips and tricks, come master resources, and committee resources as well. And then they have the troop resources and program planning there, um, in addition to the PAC information. And then um, we also have program planning resources as well. And all of this is all on nhscaling.org. And this um, QR code goes to the Membership and Marketing Hub leader resources. So feel free to snapshot that or click it and save it and hold on to it forever and ever. <laughs> uh, that's where you'll find really most things that we talk about here. Um, so I wanna ask you guys, what are your favorite events that you plan every year? Um, and you can unmute and just and just share with us what are some things that you like to put on your calendar that maybe is unique to your unit, or it's something that um, is just a unit favorite that, that a lot of us may be familiar with too. So Cindy, one thing that we haven't done in a number of years, um, which uh, came up, we had rocket launch a few weeks ago and the Weeblos started talking about this. And apparently they all talked about it in their cars on the way home too. Um, is the marshmallow musket muster. <laughs> and we haven't done, I don't think we've done it since 2018, maybe 19. Um, and so we were just talking in our committee meeting last night about putting that back on the calendar. I just wonder though, if there've been any discussions. Um, I know that shooting sports is a central part of scouting, which I think helps. So it's expected, but bringing it up yesterday just made me really nervous about proposing it to families with, you know, all of the talk about, you know, shootings in schools and in grocery stores and churches. So, um, you know, are there, are there any concerns about promoting shooting sport activities at the PAC levels? I'm glad you brought that up because um, someone else had mentioned that to me too recently. Um, you know, in light of everything happening in our world lately, it, it does um, it does make you think about these things because um, it is a very sensitive topic. Um, one of the aspects, and 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 if you guys have other things to add to this, please jump in. One of the aspects I like to um, remind folks is that you know we're all about teaching kids the, the safety um, of these um, of shooting sports, and um, you know really you know, um, providing them with uh, the, no the knowledge and also, you know, really teaching them about the, res you know, the respect, right? The respect factor of, of having these tools, having these um, elements that they're able to use, but the fact that, um, you know, there, there's something that, you know, you aim at a, at a a paper target and it's something, you know, try to get a, a bullseye and it's more of a, um, a fun activity and obviously, um, you know, keeping it, you know, within the shooting ranges and that sort of thing. Um, it is a really sensitive topic right now, definitely um, uh, with the tragedy that happened in Texas lately, um, just one of the many, many school shootings, which just broke my heart, uh, broke all of our hearts. And, um, but, you know, we, we definitely aim to teach Sorry, I did not, no pun intended there actually. Um, you know, the safety of shooting sports and 
um, the fact that it is a sport and it is a, is a popular element in scouting as well. There are a lot of schools, obviously, that do not want us to bring the BB gun range on their property, totally understandable. Um, you know, a lot of parents don't want kids, you know, playing video games that have um, shooting in them either, you know, and there is, th that is gonna be really up to the individual's interpretation, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike or Josh, did you have anything to add to that? Or Amy, Amy, you un unmuted there? Yeah, I actually just um, dealt with this topic with a new parent because we went to the spring campery and they're like, okay, well, what are you guys going to do? And I was like, oh, well, they have a lot of shooting sports. We have these arrows, the shotgun, the rifles, the BBs, um, as well as a lot of, you know, scout skills and, you know, knife skills. And they got completely upset about the idea of the guns and whatnot. And I explained to them, it, I go, my daughter, I allow because I'm teaching her that it is not a toy. It is something that can seriously hurt you if you are not safe with it. It is a tool to teach you skills, to discipline your mind and your body. It is not a toy. But again, if you're not comfortable with your child doing it, by all means, we will respect that. And to make it to where your child's not being left out, we will plan that. And then we will plan something else relatively close in time frames. So that way, yeah, your kid may not be able to go to this event, but the next event they can. But ultimately, it is your choice, and we are here to respect your choice. But I personally feel if you leave an air of mystery around it, it creates that, ooh, I want it because I can't have it. I was just going to say, we're demystifying it. Yeah, yeah, you basically put a big red button up <laughs> that everyone wants to push. Um, one thing to also think of is pack or troop level when you have new parents or even older scouts that have been in it and after the things that's been on the news recently you can always think of this scouting always aims to teach in a safe environment um, that's one of our main goals um, i'm sure paul and mike can go on this as well anytime they go to a district activity before they touch any gun they have to go through a safety course um, i'm sure we have a list maybe mike or sydney or even paul might you know be able to reach out to some of these guys too they have to be certified. They have to go through the BSA, you know, fundamentals. You can always maybe invite one of those type of guys to come to your unit without the guns and just do a quick safety thing to ease the mind of some of the parents too. Um, especially with today's time, like Sydney was saying, and what recently happened, it'll be sometimes it helps ha having a safety person explain, this is what we do. This is how we train. This is how we do it. We're not teaching this to have fun. Uh, we're teaching to show the respect. Um, and again, if the scouts and the parents don't have the ability to, um, like Amy was saying, you kind of just put a big red button. They're going to, you know, what does every parent have to go through? When you tell your kid no, you know they're going to find a way to get around you. And that's one of the worst case scenarios. We do not want that. Um, so if you're able to do it in the scouting, remind your parents, even scouts, this is a safe place to learn. Uh, reach out to those also, rangers also i let them know if they felt more comfortable they could do the youth protection and come to the event with them get the parents hooked <laughs> yeah that, those are all great points for sure and and yeah i mean we've had people come to the mobile base camp that they're like, oh, you know, we don't want to do the BB guns, but we'll do archery, you know, and, and that's understandable. And, and obviously they have that choice. Um, and the kids love doing the archery too. Um, and, you know, and that's taught in a safe way in a safe environment as well. Um, so really good question, Lauren, a uh, really good point to bring up. Um, Anyone have anything else they'd like to add about um, some of the favorite things that they put on the calendar in the past or something that they're looking forward to for next year? I know that the girls decided to put back on their list 
for this year going to Treasure Island, mm -hmm. as well as a cooking competition. Um, the Treasure Island, I'm not too thrilled on the idea of driving for six hours, but hey, it, it was for the kids. Right. <laughs> That's your one hour a week times six. <laughs> so I, I've got three I could throw into the ring. So, you know, tracing through the, the different units that I've been a volunteer with. So when I was a, a, a PAC volunteer, uh, we always tried to plan kind of one of those big fun overnight activities that would get, you know, and, and you know, start with Battleship Cove. Uh, back in the day, we had the opportunity to go to Higgins Armory, which was, no, uh, sadly, it's no longer there, but that was a great overnight. The Museum of Science was popular, and we would try to rotate it, right? We knew we had the kids for, you know, five, six years, so we try to rotate it and have a new, you know, a new destination each year, fresh one, so that every kid had an opportunity to go to every single one. You know, maybe some went to Battleship Cove as a tiger, others went as a Weeblo, but in the end, they all had an opportunity to go to Battleship Cove, as long as they joined early enough. Um, <laughs> for our troop, a, a huge event has always been, has been an annual whitewater rafting trip. And they do that um, every fall, and usually they 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 go at sort of after peak season is, is done, um, so they get a, a, a discounted rate. It's kind of the last weekend that it's, it's available, um, and that one, for whatever reason, really brings out the adults. So it's not just the kids that want to do that one. You get you get all those dads in particular, but some moms as well, who just like, oh, you guys are going whitewater rafting. I'm in. So mm -hmm. they don't necessarily participate throughout the year, but that's one event that they, they show up for. Um, and then for um, the crew that I'm involved with, um, our, probably our big event is our winter solstice uh, hike and overnight. So we usually go up to the Lonesome Lake uh, hut. And uh, so we kind of hike up through the snow, it's usually the snow, but sometimes that it requires crampons or, or snowshoes to get up there. Um, and then we spend a very, cold night uh, at one of the AMC huts, uh, but it's, it's a great event for, you know, these older kids. Um, they get some cold weather camping that's indoors, um, and then they just get uh, just a relaxing day kind of with the frozen lake, um, cooking their own meals, um, you know, in, in sort of the, the, the lodge area, and just enjoying each other's company. And uh, we, you know, we always do it, we make it special by by trying to do it on the winter solstice, so it's the shortest day of the year. But um, that's been a nice tradition that the crew is, has enjoyed several years. Those sound great. I think with my kids' pack out of Nashua, uh, we haven't done it during the pandemic, but prior, um, and it was a request, we have our annual yearly planning coming up June 11th, and the number one request from all the kids is the mini golf that we do. The, the, we always do the last week before school kicks off, we go mini golfing. Um, it's kids versus parents. Mm. And uh, it is so many smiles and laughs during the summertime. Um, we try to keep as much active and just fun. You know, the kids are always doing projects and advancements at a pack level during the school year. Uh, during the summer, it is just geared towards fun, fun, fun. Uh, we have a couple of water things that we try to do. Um, we have a regatta, which has been a very long time since we've done um, one. Actually, it's probably been six years now. There's been requests to bring that back. Um, they don't even care about competition. They just want to throw those boats on there and see who gets wet. <laughs> Most of the time, it's me. Um, but keeping it simple, even at the pack level, like Mike was saying, the Boston Museum of Science, uh, which for if anyone wants to know, they're looking at starting that back up for the old nighters starting in the beginning of the upcoming school year. Uh, I was just contacting them last weekend about that uh, for my unit. Um, the zoo overnighters have been a big hit at the Stone Zoo. And they have all requested doing that. But our month to month thing is exploring the state of New Hampshire. They want to do hikes left and right. Um, they want to find ruins in the state of New Hampshire. Ever since we went to the Madame Forest in Chesterfield, looking at the uh, old ruins of a castle, they want to find more. So every month they want to find new ruins. Quick question, Josh. The overnights at the museum, is that just for the Cub Scout level kids or is that Scout level kids as well? 
Um, I've seen older boys there and you know, older scouts. Uh, it's mostly geared. That school group too. I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead. Um, I have seen older ones there um, in the past. Um, they do have designated certain weekends, um, but for the younger ones, at before pandemic, it was almost like every weekend you would be seeing Girl Scouts, uh, Cub Scouts. And then they had Pacific weekends that were probably the slowest that they can open it up for the oldest um, troop levels. Which zoo was that that was down on the next? The uh, Boston Museum of Science. And you said one of the zoos was too? Uh, we ended up doing the Stone Zoo at one point. I believe Franklin Zoo also does an overnighter. Uh, I'm not sure if they're just opening that up just yet. Uh, we, I just started sending them emails because we missed ours because the pandemic hit. <laughs> and it was the first time my whole family was going to be able to go all together as scouts. Mm -hmm. So they want to kind of do it. Uh, but I do believe Franklin Zoo is the more recurring one. Stone, Stone Zoo is kind of, they only do it a few times out of the summer. Our last thing before COVID was an overnight at the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, yeah. That was fun, too. Yeah. The aquarium used to do them. I don't think they do them anymore, though, the Boston Aquarium. Yeah, this is Ron Gooden. I was just uh, with a bunch of really, really great Cub Scout leaders up at Camp Carpenter this weekend. I took the claw and the balloon training and kind of intimidated by all the the information that's uh, still kind of hurt my head but uh the aquarium right boston aquarium is not doing that anymore there's a possibility i guess that they might start but the one that was uh absolutely uh eye-opener is the uh, mystic aquarium mm -hmm. uh, one of uh one of the uh pack leaders had taken her her gang down there and cindy's nodding her head like you know about that yeah. this apparently is one super event they get to dissect critters yeah. and then it was an octopus or squid excuse me and then they got to help feed that squid to the the seals and uh, uh it was just great now one of the things that, that uh, this lady mentioned is that uh some of these groups now some of these uh, organizations are having a 50 person minimum so out of this group of some 20 of us uh, leaders, we're already making some plans to join forces and uh, do a combined registration. So you might want to keep that in mind because you're not going to be able to go run it down there with 12 kids or something and a few parents uh, down or across or over wherever you're going. Uh, but while I got the mic, Battleship Cove, uh, Mike uh, mentioned this already. That's That's been a favorite uh, uh, of this pack. I haven't been with it all that long, but uh, it was certainly a favorite when... Uh, when my son, who is now 40, uh, was a Cub Scout, we went down there together. Uh, Pinewood Derby is, you know, without a doubt, every, one of everybody's favorites. Uh, but we've been doing some uh, kind of odds and ends of activities uh, over in uh, in Hollis at the uh, uh, Beaver Brook. Uh, in the fall, we did a maple sapping event. Uh, the kids learned all about uh the maple trees and how the sap runs and, and how they make uh, uh, syrup from that. And then uh, it was kind of an unofficial pack event, uh, but they did a paddling event. They went to a nice, smooth, shallow river. Uh, I forget where it was, but I can find out if somebody's interested. Uh, the group uh, gave uh, gave the scouts a bit of a discount, I believe, on on uh, admission. So there's, there's a couple more to throw out and add to the a pile of activities uh, and and by the way we're we're planning one summer uh, i'm excuse me one activity per month during the summer and uh so that's try to get the camp award or the summer activity award and, and do some things like that so and i apologize by the way for being late i'm sitting in the car after a pack meeting uh, <laughs> ran a little long so, uh, our, our pack, um, in april recently just uh spent a couple hours at the fish hatchery in Milford. And they were, at, it was actually at a time when they were loading up fish to go take to stock other lakes and stuff. The kids had a blast watching that happen. 
I didn't know there's a fish hatchery in Milford. There's there's one yeah. in uh, Nashville, but there's one that have in uh, Manchester that advertises their learning center. And yeah. I haven't investigated that yet. Yeah, there is one in Milford. Um, and they're very agreeable to I'm, have visitors. Excellent. That's not to know. I'm Thanks. just joining the meeting during the two meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know Thursdays are busy so, nights and yeah. So does this count? Can I count this as two hours if I'm double? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those are, yeah we minutes? can double it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ron, those were some great ideas. I know Ron's from um, my uh, PAC 19. I was, I still say my PAC 19. I was, I was there a few years, a few years ago. Um, and um and Paul, thanks for coming during your meeting too. I know Thursdays are busy nights for meetings, I think. Um, I know Josh just came from his, I think, right? Uh, 424. 424? The Nashville's uh, fishing game. And they uh, just updated their pin. I sat there and helped them update their pin so that they Oh, need. nice. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I love all these ideas. I was going to mention the hatcheries too, and I forgot. Which ones did it? Those are great ideas too. The kids love that. So if you're looking um, for anything at a troop level to do, uh, especially if you're in the summertime, um, especially if you're in the Southern New Hampshire, head over to Milford's to the drive-in theater. Um, we, yeah. mm -hmm. That was one fun thing to do just as a unit. Um, Only if you stop by and pick me up. Yes. <laughs> it's a song, you know, basically you have to go buy my condo to get to it, so. Yeah. I could never up. last to the hey. second movie, though. That's my problem. I know. <laughs> it is. It's super late. I've been yep. trying for a very long time with that, um, the owners there um, to do a scout night just, you know, during the summer. Then oh, that'd be a great idea. Scout and one, one side would be just for, you know, scouting and everything. And it's just one of those. It's hit and miss sometimes. And it, it holds in their email for a while. They don't reply. I drive down there and the person's never there. It's very hard to get. So if anyone wants to take a chance and try to call them up, see if we can do a scout night, that'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be a great idea. Yeah, and as you, if you guys are stumped for summer plans, um, I did put in the chat the flyer for um, the Fishing for Adventure. So you can add that flyer to your email communications with your units. Um, you can print them out, hand them out to your families if you like, and please encourage them to bring a friend. It's all free. And we also supply the fishing rods and bait as well. Um, so we just ask that you bring a bag lunch and some water. Um, we don't have food this time, but maybe next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely there's lots of events you can plan around, um, you know, and, you know, add to your units plans for the next coming year for sure. Um, I know with our troop, um, they seem to like riding, uh, bikes on the rail trails in Nashua. Um, we did a Cape Cod bike trip, which is really popular. Mm. Um, especially when you stop for ice cream and in, um, in the middle too. <laughs> um, we do a lot of weekend campouts. Um, I know uh, we had 17 kids that went to um, the campery this past weekend, and they had a blast. Um, and um, I'm trying to think something else they did recently. We're they're actually doing a combined recruiting event with Pac-19 on June. Second, um, the kids are all being encouraged to invite a non-scouting friend, and the um, troop planned all the activities, um, specifically the den leaders for the pack. Um, they were in charge. They are also told that they had to market it as a recruiting event, so it's a great learning experience for these kids because they get some marketing experience. They have to stand up in front of, you know. Um, the group and talk about the event and not and not to mention planning and budgeting and making sure that they have um all their decks in a row for the event too so they're really excited about that as well yeah our, our trip is going to go to Patakwe uh in june and i don't know if any of you guys have done that um we actually have canoes it troop to 260 in brookline and we loan them out to units if people are interested they can just reach out and if the weekend's available then we're happy to do that. Um, we have a trailer of eight 16 footers with all, all the gear. Wow. Um, but anyway, they're going to go to Patek Way. They're going to spend a, a day paddling along around the lake. But there's also a great uh, bouldering area at Patek Way. 
and the kids love climbing on that, spending all day doing that and, and doing that rock climbing thing. Next year, our big paddling thing is going to be Umbagog, um, like um, Umbagog, where they're going to island hop for several days. And that's always oh, a fun cool. trip, too. Yeah. Those are great ideas. I love that. Our troops doing right water rafting this mm -hmm. coming month, um, oh, and fun. they've decided they're going to sea base. In oh, year. awesome. So we're starting yeah. the yep. In our trip is doing more sea base a bigger too, trip, yeah. um, which is exciting. And we have one of our scouters going to the World Jamboree, the not the yeah the World Jamboree oh, in cool. Korea. So that's exciting. Um, and then at the pack, our pack we camp in the fall. So everyone's getting really geared up. Each one does their own camp out with their families and gets all their big outdoor requirements done. So they're all. Um, you know, getting revved for that. The kids love that. The Weeblos try to go up to Griswold to do theirs and the younger dens do Carpenter. And then we all practice our campfire programs. And in October, we all get together as a pack and do counseling. So that's oh, always nice. one that they really enjoy and look forward to. Um, and then we do either for November for bobcat ceremonies. We always do some sort of regatta. So we either do space derby or rain gutter regatta to kind of make uniform inspection in bobcat that much more interactive. Um, and then we do a giant blue and gold in February. So the kids are all, they're already like asked. We just did a big STEM party on Friday. And so they were all like, what, what's next? What's next? <laughs> we're doing this, we're doing that. So we're really lucky we have pack picnic in June and we race cub mobiles and we have just a really good time. So we actually do a ton of outdoor and a lot of camping. So I'm really fortunate being really close to the camps that we get to, it's really easy for us to do that. That's where they should be, outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I love the space derby and of course Pinewood Derby is always a favorite with the packs and um, Rangata Regatta too is always, you know, pretty easy to do. And, um, you know, th those are all really fun annual events. Um, I love all those, Jillian. That's, I want to come join. That sounds like fun. <laughs> um, I was just thinking of something else that we did that I wanted to bring up and it just left my brain again. Um, it'll come back to me. <laughs> A lot of fun stuff. Um, blue and gold is always fun. It's always great to celebrate all their achievements, you know, um, especially the kids who are crossing over. That's, that's always, that's an emotional time. I've gone to a blue and gold, you know, every year since we started. And it's, even though I don't know the kids really that much anymore, I still cry. <laughs> I was this would be the first year with my kids pack. And last year um, handling the planning meeting I'm just hosting it we're doing it at Greeley Park in Nashua as a barbecue type of thing and this will be the first time I'm actually not planning anything so I'm kind of curious to see my only plan for them is what I'm doing all the way until September which is all the hikes mm. so I'm kind of curious to see what some of these newer parents that are you know involved for a few more years um, will come up with so um I'm kind of curious if anyone else has done or, or have a date for their yearly planning, or is it, yeah. yeah so trying to get, we're doing ours week after next, yeah. uh, two, weeks, two weeks from tonight. The unit I just left uh, was just working on a six month one. Um, so just curious. We're, we're doing our draft next week and then we finally like, finalize everything in August. Awesome. We've got it pretty much, pretty much buttoned down in June, and then uh, yeah, cross the eyes, dot the T's in August. Yeah, one of the things this is Ron Gunner again. One of the things I learned this weekend in the training is that they recommend uh, they be, being BSA recommends that the uh, the dens some kind of a uh, planning event. Uh, individual dens so that, that they have some kind of an idea of what they want to do in the way of uh, particularly some of the major events 
know, whether it's rain gutter, regatta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the things we've been talking about. And so that those plans then are able to, to be fed, fit in, rolled into the, the PACS annual plan rather than everybody being kind of caught flat footed and saying, well, you know, we, I don't know, we haven't really talked about that much. <laughs> uh, so, and, and by the way, I, I got to throw this in and then I'll be quiet. One of the, the cub leaders that was at the uh, training this weekend uh, gave us a tip and it, <laughs> it almost sounds like, like treason or something here, but Sam Houston council, if you don't know this already has an amazing website. And on that website, the, the reason I bring this up is there is a matrix, uh, and I think it's under the program tab. Uh, I don't have it up now. There is a matrix that cross-references all of the Cub Scout requirements and electives and, and some activities. So you can go through that thing. It's If you print it out, it's a 33-page document. Uh, and, and I just printed it yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to look at it. But I'm going to send a link to... Uh, to all of my folks, uh, and it and it's great because if you're going to say, well, let's do a service project, let's do whatever, uh, who needs that? Well, here's a chart you can go to, and it says it's it's a wolf requirement such and such, and bear requirement such and such, and there goes a fox across the parking lot, a live <laughs> fox. <laughs> oh, oh that's gosh. cool. Yeah, uh, two two fox. Oh my goodness! Across nice. The parking lot at the church. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, we're at uh, uh, we're at the First Baptist Church here in in, uh, in Nashua. That's where we have our meetings now. Sorry for the, the digression, but <laughs> at any rate, so uh, I, Cindy, if I can, now that I have, I think I got your right address. I've been sending stuff to your personal email, and oh. and it goes into the to the bit bucket, uh, never <laughs> never land. So uh, Andrew gave me your your correct one tonight. Oh, good. Scouting.org. Perfect. So I will send you that link to the Sam Houston Council Tri-Pacific uh, document. Uh, it's it's really something. There is so much information in there, but that might help in, in your annual planning stuff, folks. Over. Thank you, Ron. I know my Comcast email, if anyone has tried to send me anything, it is awful. It's so full. A lot of times stuff goes in my junk and sometimes I don't even receive half of it. It's pretty bad. So well, I was ready to come track you. Yeah, I was ready to come track you down and, and, and say, hey, I'm not feeling any love here. You know, you're not I know. responding to me. But now, now I know yeah. why. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> I know. I know. That's sorry. Oh man. Thank you, Ron. I know I, I appreciate all you do. I'm sorry. It's it really is stuck in um the, the web universe. I have no idea what's happening to some of my emails. Um, the thing I wanted to mention that I actually wrote down, so I won't forget is, and I'm, I think a lot of our troops do this, but we do an annual turkey camp out that the kids just love. Mm -hmm. We invite, yeah, everyone's shaking their heads, right? It's so much fun. It's one of my favorite things. Of course, I love turkey. Um, and, you know, the scouts cook the turkey in uh, their own box ovens that they actually put together and make. Um, and uh, families bring sides and it's a whole family event, which I really love. And we invite um, past scouts and leaders that were involved with the troop as well and it's just great to reunite with everybody um it's a lot it's a lot of fun and it's kind of a great way to celebrate the holiday season together um too and that yeah. is, oh friendsgiving yes amy that's right um i love that it's very true it's very much a friendsgiving it's so much fun and that's definitely um an annual event um, we do the same and we invite our weeblos also to come yes yeah it's and a great families. event yeah. We invite the Weeblos yeah. too, and they, nice. they love it. Yeah, it's a great way to start that relationship. Oh, thanks, Amy. I know her phone's gonna die. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, it's a great way to, um, you know, get them more comfortable with the kids because you're at this very low key, uh, casual, fun event where there's a lot of things involved, right? You're cooking, you have a campfire, maybe you do s'mores. The kids are playing, maybe a good game of catch off to the side. So it's a great. It's a great casual event to really um, get the younger kids involved. It's a great idea. Um, well, we went well over um, an hour time frame. Mm -hmm. Has anyone uh, anything else to add um, or any questions? Otherwise, I will let everyone get back to their families and evenings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I um, I'm still at the office, so I have to make my way home. But <laughs> yeah, I didn't have power today because. Um, 
I we had electricians over fixing a few things. So I said, I'm just gonna stay here because I was nervous. My Wi-Fi was not going to work um, when I got home. <laughs> Very paranoid about that. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Um, but we appreciate all that you all are doing. Um, obviously, um, I know we have very all the strong leaders here with their with their units tonight and please spread the word to other unit leaders that um, you know what what you learned from the workshop or past workshops that you guys have attended and definitely encourage them to join us um, it's always the last Thursday of every month at 7 p.m on zoom and they can find the link and past workshops um, um, on the membership and marketing hub under workshops um, so you can see the other recorded ones too, and um, definitely encourage other leaders to come. And when you guys go to roundtable and everything, please spread the word for me. I try to make it to a lot of our roundtables. I've I've made my way to a few. Um, I have a few more I have to get to, but um, definitely spread the word for me. And um, and we appreciate all that you guys are doing. It sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like everyone has a lot of fun and is planning for more fun. So that's exciting. Cindy, um, this is Ron again. Where will the recording be posted of tonight's um, session since I missed 40 minutes of it? <laughs> it's on the Membership and Marketing Hub under Workshops. Okay. Um, okay. On the homepage, it'll say Workshops. So all the recordings are there and the slide deck will be there. Um, this one probably, um, usually it's posted the next day or at least by the Monday, but since Monday is a holiday, this one might not be up until Tuesday. I'm not sure um, how quick we'll get it turned around. Um, but um, do I have the link to the sign up help in Concord? Are you talking about the mobile base camp, Jillian? Yeah, you had said last week on your Thursday membership live that you would post the link and I, I couldn't find it. You said you would be oh, up for family days that. in Concord and I think I can come up and help that weekend. Oh um, my gosh, that really would be cool. awesome. I'm gonna get it in there right now. Um, and I think we're adding, um, I know, um, I put the mobile base camp um, volunteer link in the mem uh, the membership newsletters, which go out every Monday. Uh -huh. so okay. Yeah, I missed that somehow. The most of the time you do an event, it's Wood Badge Staff Development Weekend, so oh. it's kind of stuck. Um, but so I was like, I don't think that one coincides, so I could possibly help. Oh my gosh! Well, we appreciate that because the more the merrier for sure. Um, I'm just grabbing the link now here. Um, Ron, did that answer your question about the workshops, Joe? Yes, I believe so. I, I got distracted a little bit. The fox was back. One of the foxes was back <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, that's something. I know in Nashua too. Must be lost. All right, let's see. Yeah, it was hunting. It was getting dinner. That's so neat. Sorry, my. Uh, laptops working extra slow with everything running in the background here. There we go. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of events. We even have more. The events that I have listed here are a lot of, of the really large community events. Um, and then we also have other unit level events that um, they still have the mobile base camp going to, you know, a community community event as well, but they may need range masters and that sort of thing. So um, I'll definitely be sending out another um, call for range masters too and other volunteers for those activities coming up. One of them, um, which, let's see, did I add that to the con uniform? I'm gonna look here real quick. Um, we just added the Webster House, which um, is a home for children in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, I didn't add it to the cognito form yet, but I'll add it um, once I get home tonight. Um, we're just going to be there from, I believe it's five to eight or six to eight on June 17th. It's, a, it's actually a Friday night. Um, and um, we're just bringing the mobile base camp so the kids can experience some scouting fun. Um, mm -hmm. And we'd love to have as many volunteers that would like to join me there. That would be awesome. Um, right in Manchester. And like I said, I'll add that to the Cognito form tonight too. I thought I added it, but I didn't add it quite yet. Are there any other questions? A lot of the resources that I shared here and shared in the PowerPoint, like I said, it's not like a broken record, but they are in the membership and marketing hub. And if you 
go there and don't see something that you're expecting, definitely let us know. Um, if you have questions, don't know exactly who to reach out to, your best bet is to enter a ticket at support at nhscouting.org. That will get filtered to the right person who can um, help you out. And if you haven't entered joint scouting dates yet, please do. Um, hopefully at some of the summer fun events, we can encourage some of our scouts to invite their non-scouting friends to check out your unit in a, in a casual fun environment and get them started and ready for fall. Thank you everybody so much. Um, I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. Happy, happy Memorial Day weekend. Hope we can take advantage of the long weekend and remember those who um, served and lost their lives for us. Um, we salute our veterans as well. So thank you everybody. And um, feel free to email me anytime. Membership at nhscaling.org with any questions. Happy to help. Thanks everybody. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.